Our next topic is network functions. Under this topic, let us understand the comparison of 5G network functions with 4G nodes. Let's understand the comparison between the 5G nodes with 4G nodes first. It will help you correlate the network functions with older technology while studying it in later parts of the course. As we can see from table on the screen, EMF works as a part of MME from 4G core. It is responsible from mobility management. It makes the NAS signaling connection with user equipment and helps user equipment to register. HSS is turned into both AUSF and UDM. UDM sends the authentication vector to AUSF in order to make the subscriber authentication during registration. In 4G, this was held by HSS. Some part of MME is turned into SMF which provides the session management functionality of it. In addition to this, it also combines some control plane functions of the SGW and PGW. SMF also does the job of giving IP to user equipments. UPF has some roles of SGW and PGW. SGW and PGW was responsible for data traffic and UPF does this traffic transport which is done by these two. Data traffic comes from UE to G node B to UPF. Therefore, UPF can be called as gateway for internet or other networks. Subscriber authentication during registration or re-registration with 5G is managed by the authentication server function AUSF which obtains authentication vectors from the UDM. Together they represents the functionality of HSS in 4G code. Application function AF is same as the AF in 4G core. NSSF is a new core network function in 5G. Its main functionality is to provide a required virtual slice of RAN, core and transport networks. In the future, operators will build some specific network slices depends on some requirements and NSSF function will have the information about these different network slices including their definitions, resources, etc. UE may be able to ask operator to register different slice of a network and it will be able to request this while registering to the network. At this point, NSSF will just provide the information and functionalities of slices but it will not authorize the UE. AMF will be responsible on this issue to authorize UE depending on the subscription information which will come from UDM. UDM is responsible for generating the authentication vectors. They are requested by AUSF which is similar to 1MME. However, he does this using the subscriber profiles that are stored in UDR. UDR is like a database to store subscriber information application-specific data, and policy data. Policy control is similar to 1 and 4G core network, but this time it is controlled by PCF and PCF has some extra and new functions compared to PCRF, which is in 4G. EMF asks PCF for getting the access and mobility policies. One of the new functionality of PCF is to make resource reservation for the other services using HTTP or XML based interface. Network exposure function NEF and network function repository function NRF are new function introduced in 5G. Our next topic is access and mobility management function AMF. The AMF is a control plane function within the 5G core network. The primary responsibilities of the AMF includes first, Registration management, second, connection management, third, reachability management, fourth, mobility management. It works as a part of MME from 4G core. Registration management allows a UE to register and deregister with the 5G system. A UE must complete the registration procedure to receive authorization to use 5G services. 
Registration moves the UE from the RMD register state to the RM register state. Registration creates a UE context within the network. A UE context is a set of parameters which identify and characterize the UE. Some of the parameters belonging to a UE context are presented in a figure shown on the screen. The AMF interacts with other network functions during the registration procedure. For example, the AMF forwards the permanent equipment identifier PEI to the SMF, UDM and PCF. Connection management is used to establish and release the control plane signaling connection between the UE and the AMF, that is, across the N1 interface. Establishing an N1 signaling connection moves the UE from CM idle to CM connected. The N1 signaling connection allows non-access stratum NAS message to be exchanged between the UE and the AMF. The AMF is the termination point within the core network for the integrity protection and ciphering applied to NAS messages. The termination point for NAS signaling procedures can either the AMF or the SMF. Reachability management is used to ensure that a UE is always reachable. That is, it is possible to page the UE when there is a requirement to establish a mobile terminated connection. Paging a UE which is in the CM idle state triggers the UE to initiate the NAS service request procedure and subsequently establish an N1 signaling connection before moving into the CM connected state. The AMF supports reachability management by storing location information as part of the UE context. The UE context includes the registration area, a tracking area or a list of tracking areas within which the UE is registered. The UE context can also include more specific information regarding the UE location, that is, recommended cells and nodes for paging. UE which are configured to use mobile initiated connection only MICO are categorized as being unreachable. These UE cannot be paged and are only able to establish mobile originated connections from the CM idle state. Mobility management is used to maintain knowledge of the UE's location within the network. The UE is required to complete periodic registration updates after it has completed initial registration. These periodic updates act as keep alive to verify that the UE remains on the system and has not moved out of coverage or become unavailable due to any other reason. Example, the battery has drained. The UE is also required to complete updates due to mobility. These upgrades are triggered if the UE moves outside the current registration area, that is, outside the tracking area or list of tracking areas within which the UE is currently registered. The AMF is also responsible for handling next generation application protocol, NGAP, signaling which is transferred between the AMF and a next generation RAN mode, that is, between an AMF and a base station. NGAP is equivalent to S1-AP, which is used in 4G networks between the MME and base station. Categories of NGAP signaling procedures include PDU session management, UE context management, UE mobility management, paging procedures, transport of NAS messages, interface management, configuration transfer, warning message transmission. PDU session management procedures are used to set up, modify and release resources at the base station and UE. The SMF is responsible for PDU session management, so these procedures are completed after the AMF has been instructed by the SMF. UE mobility management procedures are used to support a handover procedures. XN based handover procedures use the N gap path switch signaling procedure. The XN interconnects a pair of 5G BTS similar to the X2 interface used by 4G. 
N2 based handover warning message transmission procedures use the N gap handover required, handover request, handover command, and handover notify signaling procedures. N gap is used to transfer NAS messages between the BTS and AMF, while a signaling radio bearer SRB is used to transfer NAS messages between the UE and BTS. The combination of these hops provide the end-to-end -end transfer of NAS messages across the N1 interface between the UE and AMF. The combination of NAS and N-gap signaling is shown in the figure on screen. This figure also illustrates a subset of NAS messages being transferred to and from the SMF. Interface management procedures are used to set up the NG connection between the base station and AMF. Both the N1 and N2 interfaces uses the NG connection between the base station and AMF. Interface management procedures also allow both RAN and AMF configuration updates to be provided. For example, the RAN configuration update allows the base station to inform the AMF of any changes to the supported PLMN and tracking areas. Configuration transfer procedures allow the base station and AMF to exchange information related to self-optimization networks (SOM). For example, these procedures can be used to support automatic neighbor relations. The end-to-end -end transfer of information could be between a pair of base stations, but the information has to be sent via the AMF if an XN interface does not exist between the base stations. The AMF is responsible for allocating a 5G globally unique temporary identifier, which is a concatenation of the globally unique AMF identifier and the 5G temporary mobile subscription identifier 5G TMSI. The 5G GUTI provides greater privacy than the IMSI because it is a temporary ID entity which the AMF can reassign at any time. 3GPP has specified mapping rules between the 5G GUTI and the 4G GUTI. This includes a mapping between the AMF identity and the MME identity. The 5G TMSI is mapped onto the 4G MTMSI. The AMF is responsible for selecting an appropriate authentication server function AUSF during the registration procedure. The AUSF allows the UE to authenticate itself with the 5G core network that is, verify that the subscriber is genuine and authorized to access the network. The AMF may be configured to use a specific AUSF or the AMF may use the network repository function NRF to discover suitable AUSF within the 5G core network. The AMF is responsible for selecting an appropriate unified data management UDM function during registration procedure. The UDM manages the user subscription information. The AMF may be configured to use a specific UDM or the AMF may use the network function repository function to discover a UDM which manages the user's subscription. The AMF is responsible for selecting an appropriate policy control function PCF for the UE during the registration procedure. The PCF provides the AMF with an access and mobility policy for the UE. This may include a specification of allowed or forbidden tracking areas. The AMF may be configured to use a specific PCF or the AMF may use the network function repository function to discover the PCF which can provide the relevant UE information. The AMF is responsible for selecting an appropriate session management function during PDU session establishment. The AMF can apply a range of criteria during the selection procedure. First, Data Network Name DNN. A DNN is a 5G equivalent of a 4G access point name APN. 
It refers to the data network to which the PDU session provides connectivity. For example, there may be a DNN for connectivity towards the public internet. A specific SMF may be configured to support a specific set of DNN. Second, subscription information. The AMF retrieves subscription information from the Unified Management UDM function during the registration procedure. This can include information regarding the set of subscribed DNN. Third, Single Network Slice Selection Association Information An SNSSAI identifies a network slice. It comprises a slice or service type SST and a slice differentiator SD. The SST defines the expected network behavior. For example, value 1 refers to enhanced mobile broadband EMBB and value 2 refers to ultra reliable low latency communication URLLC. The SD allows differentiation of services belonging to the same SST. The AMF provides support for the short message service. Mobile terminated SMS are received from the SMS function and are packaged within a NAS message before being transferred to the UE. A signaling radio bearer, SRB, is used to transfer the NAS message across the air interface. The AMF receives mobile originated SMS within uplink NAS messages and forward them to SMSF. The SMSF is an optional network function. Here I conclude this course. Hope you understand all the concepts clearly. Meet you in the next course. If you have any queries, please get in touch with us by typing your comment in the comment section. Thank you for watching. Do like and subscribe to our videos. So what are you waiting for? Join us for the course and do subscribe to our YouTube channel and don't forget to press the bell icon. Also, if you like our videos, don't forget to hit the like button and share our videos.